every single one of this year's Grand Tours either has featured or is about to feature a team time trial. In fact, the Tour of Spain kicks off with one starting in the town just behind me. Get this event right and it can be one of the fastest, most exhilarating and rewarding events that you can do as a cyclist. Get it even slightly wrong and you can end up losing huge chunks of time. But how do you do a good team time trial? What makes a well-drilled team? We're going to try and explain some of the key points in this event, along with the help of some of the riders who feature here at the Vuelta. Now it might seem quite obvious that the hardest part of a team time trial is when you're on the front of the team pushing all of the wind, but that's not completely true because after you've done your turn and you lose a bit of speed and go back down the line, you've then got to increase that speed again in order to get back onto the wheel of the last rider. Now if you've gone too far into the red and pushed too much power, you won't have enough power left in order to make that acceleration and you'll just have to watch your team sail up the road. So don't go all the way into the red when you're riding on the front. To ride it as smooth as possible and avoid any ex excessive accelerations. And how much you train on, how much do you know who is good and who is not. It's hard, you have to, to, to train a lot more with them. And now some guys we didn't see for a long time. We've got some uh, guys who are doing their first uh, team time trial. That's, that's really hard. Putting uh, the big guys on the wheel of each other so you don't have a, a guy that of 185 sitting on the wheel of a guy of 165 or whatever. Well, that's how to do a good team time job, but how does it start to go wrong? Well, it seemed to be a common theme amongst a couple of the riders that we caught up with. One year in the tour, where I was in, in front of uh, Fabian Cancellara. For one year at Tirreno, like I was riding the second guy behind Cancellara. So I was last guy when, when Fabian was pulling, and that was terrible. I mean, I, I got dropped at the end also and uh, I became the guy who right behind Cancellara. I was riding full and I was like, you got this massive ass. You think you're out of the wind, but somehow you're full in the wind. Yeah. You saw aerodynamics, but somehow you feel like you're on the, on the front the whole time pushing. And when there's no harmony, then it's suffering time. And then that, that's the most I think that, that, that everybody dislikes. Now the physiological demands of a team time trial are in fact completely different to that of an individual event. In the latter, what you're trying to do is a steady state power, the maximum that you can sustain for the duration of the event. Whereas in a team event, you're actually going over that sustainable power whilst you're on the front. When you get back into the shelter of your teammates, you're trying to recover. But the similarity between the two disciplines is that you don't want to start too fast. If you feel like you're in the red or on your limit after five minutes, then the likelihood is that you've done exactly that. And that's particularly relevant in this work to team time trial because after a very technical start through the town they quickly hit this climb that you can see behind me and it actually goes on for quite a long distance around this corner and if you get the likes of Tony Martin or Fabian Cancellara two of the strongest time trialists in the bunch it's very easy for them to put their teammates into the red because of course on a climb the power between the riders in the wheel and that of the rider on the front is very similar so you want to be smooth particularly in this first section in the long run that's going to make the quicker time. After that climb comes a particularly narrow and technical descent through a village and this is again where the rider on the front really needs to consider his teammates behind him. If that rider is particularly technically gifted and if he goes at full speed the likelihood is there will be some gaps starting to open up for some of the more cautious riders in the team. After that it opens out onto this big long straight road and before they accelerate up to that cruising speed of 60 to 65 k's an hour they just want to check that all of the riders are safely together and then they can get on with it. Exactly the same thing applies after corners and roundabouts. If the front rider accelerates as soon as he hits the exit, the likelihood is that the ninth rider is still entering it. And so he's gonna to have to accelerate doubly as hard in order to keep up with the rest of his team. At just over three kilometers to go, the riders will go up the last climb of the day. Now it doesn't look like much in the profile, but actually it is quite hard and coming where it does in the time trial, I'm sure there's going to be a few people really suffering. And this is where the teams are going to have to be really careful. As with most team time trials, it's the fifth rider across the line whose time will be counted towards the team. So if they're down to five or even six guys at this point, they're really going to have to look after the last two because if they start suffering and get dropped, the rest of the team is going to have to wait and that is when you can start to lose huge chunks of time. If they do come to the top here all organised, it should be relatively plain sailing towards the finish because it's got 1k of downhill and then 2k's of flat and then it's all over. And finally, after 27 kilometres, the teams will arrive here on the beautiful seafront at San Chencho. It is a slightly more difficult course than the one we saw in this year's Tour de France, but I'm still expecting average speeds in the region of 55 kilometres per hour from the best teams. My favourites are Astana and Mobistar, but they're all going to have to pay attention as they cross the finish line, because at the moment, even the Orica car wouldn't get under that. 
There are a lot of secrets to a good attack, and we lift the lid on the pro tips. For an attack to be effective, you need to create a gap between your back wheel and the group you're leaving. 